You are tuned to ARP on the Accelerated Radio Network. It's 12 noon, and it's time to have lunch. Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Bringing money talk you can understand. And now here's your host, Miss Charlene. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Miss Charlene, and welcome to Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Today we have as our guest... Hello, guest. <laughs> His name is Corey Kaiser, and he's with Kaiser Financial Services, and he's an accountant. And Lord knows we need one, don't we, Cass? Don't we, Cast? We need them, don't we? Yeah. Just call me Cassie. I, I, Cassie. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why did I call you Cassie? I don't either. Maybe Just we know a Cassie. It's Nathan. Or maybe we will. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You're <laughs> <laughs> we clap for the ones we appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Charlene. You're kind of quiet over there today. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We want you to have some questions, mm-hmm. and, and Nathan's going to have some questions, and I have plenty of questions to ask our guests. And we're talking about um, finance today, of course, and from an accountant's perspective. Okay. Okay. And so, what made you decide to go into accounting? You know, it's a funny story. When I was in college, the last thing I wanted to do was be an accountant. You know, I'm sitting here in business class going, what are you talking about? You know, just give me my C and let me graduate. (laughs) Right? Just let me have a C and let me graduate. But when I graduated, I came home to work for a family business. Okay. And strangely enough, the only people that you talk to in business are the lawyers and the accountants. That's right. So I had to kind of, you know, go back to square one and start to understand the logic and the reason behind all these accountants were asking me things that honestly didn't make a whole lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And then over time, after year after year, I kind of realized what they're asking for, why, what's the logic behind it, why what I just gave him isn't what he needs Mm -hmm. versus, you know, Mm. giving him something else and that's exactly what he needs now. Uh, That company, we had a municipal contract with the city of Los Angeles when we lost the contract. I started my own business. It was a roadside assistance contract uh, that I had with uh, a series of different roadside assistance suppliers. And now that my money was on the table, it's that much more important to understand what the money was doing uh, uh, how things were performing and everything else. Because right. honestly, when it's someone else's money, it's someone else's money. That's it's, right. It's their loss. As long as my paycheck is good on Friday, <laughs> yeah. you know. I hope my dad doesn't hear me say that. But <laughs> <laughs> he will. He probably will. But, you know, that's just the honest truth. You know, people only depend on what's theirs. That's right. You know, and what they're expecting. But then when you wind up having to be the person to sit on the other side of the desk and right. the money that you make is what's left after rent, insurance, payroll, taxes, util- you know, all the different things that you have mm-hmm. to pay for. Now that my dollar is on the line, I had to be very, very careful with what this money was doing and how it was behaving. That's right. You know, well, after I closed <laughs> my business up, uh, I went to go work for... Uh, can I say where I was? Sure. Okay, I was an uh, accounting manager for Culver City Unified School District. Okay. And strangely enough, I was able to get that job because all of those years is working for my dad and working for myself. I had enough general understanding and, you know, ability to be able to take a management position with them. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. You know, so I wound up doing that. <laughs> 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 well, after a little while, I uh, I lost my job through the economic downturn that happened mm-hmm. in 2008, and I decided I would go back to school and finish up all those different accounting classes that I needed to take. At the time, my boss had his CPA, mm-hmm. and... I was telling him I wanted to go to Anderson School at UCLA, get my master's degree, everything else. He wrote me a great recommendation letter and everything, but when I found out what tuition was for mm-hmm. a master's program, which was north of 50 grand a year, mm-hmm. yes. you know, I just said, you know what, I, I can't find myself you know, more than $150,000 in debt right. with the expectation that my salary potential is only going to raise by maybe $20,000. Right. A little while later, my boss asks me, well, how'd things go? What's going on? Well, congrats. You know, good luck. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, 
it's great that you were accepted, but mm -hmm. why aren't you going? I said, I couldn't afford it. He said, well, why don't you think about getting your CPA? Because it's going to cost you a tenth of the amount of money to get your license versus mm -hmm. your master's degree. And you'll probably have a much higher earning potential. That's right. Because it's a specified mm. uh, uh, discipline. That's right. Versus just another couple of years of generalized business school, business classes. You know? So that's a lesson in itself for people. <laughs> right? I'm already it, helpful. You're already <laughs> helpful because you're talking about, you know, getting your CPA when you already have the classes necessary to back you in that discipline versus going to school for another two years to get a master's degree, which is going to be general, and spend a hundred to $150,000 for that, and your income potential is not as great as if you have a CPA because yeah. it's well-respected. Right. You know, in a lot of ways, it's... It's a, a it, it's a generalized additional two years of school, right? You know, and I really couldn't justify why would I go into you know being six figures in debt when the return on the investment really was minimal. Spoken like a true CPA, the return on investment wasn't there. So <laughs> no, that's really good. That's really good because I was wondering, you know, a lot of times, you know, the t the what you are accustomed to um, seeing when you're talking to a CPA or, you know, what's generally the st stereotypical CPA is not who sits in front of me. You know, you're this cool guy mm -hmm. with a lot of knowledge. And when I called you yesterday, you were teaching. You had a student that you were helping with their financial classes. Correct. And so, <laughs> you, you know, you're more, you have a lot more dimension. Well, you know, you. than thank who you. I'm accustomed to, you know, talking to when we're talking about a CPA. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, you sit in front of a CPA and you feel like, oh, God, you know, you, you're handing them your life, you know, and it's <laughs> like going to the principal's office, right? <laughs> you're waiting for them to say, okay, you did this wrong and this wrong and this wrong. But what I noticed about you is you take the time to explain. Right. You know, right. I try to. You try to explain to people, you know, this is why you need to do this. This is why you need to do that. Because I asked a question of you earlier also before we got on the air. And that question was, you know, what happens to people who have not filed their taxes yet? You know, this is the last, you know, work day of the month of October. Yeah. And people in general think they have till the end of October to file <laughs> their taxes. And you said, no, you, you can explain it because I just... You know. Well, taxes are generally due on the 15th of April for right. individuals. If you file an extension, they give you a six-month extension, right. which means that it would have been due the 15th of October. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were you know, just kind of talking about. Right. If people didn't do it, then they just kind of default on getting it in on time. Right. Uh, there can be penalties and interest and things involved mm -hmm. when the IRS comes knocking on your door. Right. So I was saying that, you know, we think about the IRS as like, you know, these guys in black suits that show up at your door and saying, you know, give me your paycheck, give me your money. You owe us this much, you know. And so we we generally don't understand the penalties and costs behind not filing things on time and not doing things in a timely manner. And we just kind of, you know, generally a lot of people just let it go. Correct. Very you true. know, just, you know, I'll get to it, you know, I'll get to it. And then they don't. And here we come two or three years later and you're forced into a situation where you have to file your taxes and it's right. a mess. Right. You know, I'll tell you, that's a very, very common reaction that people have. They didn't mm -hmm. file one year and they think that they're in a lot more trouble than they really are. Mm -hmm. And the I don't know why, but the most common reaction or the common response is for people just to kind of bury their head in the sand yes. and hope that it just kind of goes, goes away, away in time. Yeah. Like the IRS is going to forget. Right. You know, and it doesn't happen. And as life continues and goes on, people decide, oh, I think I want to buy a house or, That's oh, right. I think I want to do this or, you know, any number of different things can happen. And now you've got to go back and readdress that situation. Yeah. You know, and I get a lot of people at tax time that come to me and say, you know, I haven't filed taxes since 2010, 2011. You know, you're thinking, well, wow, you know, why not? Why not? Yeah. And, and I tell a lot of people, you know, the best thing for you to do is <laughs> always make sure you file your taxes. And the reason why is because there are potential monies that you can get back. Right. Even if you didn't earn very much or didn't pay much into it because there are different credits that are refundable that mm -hmm. you can still wind up getting money back, even though <laughs> you might not have put as much into the 
uh, uh, IRS. So it's to your benefit to file your taxes. Exactly. And it's always to your benefit because then even if you owe, you don't want to accumulate all of the penalties that go along with exactly. that too because, you know, the IRS is unforgiving. You, you have to pay them. You do. You know, you, you, <laughs> you, you can't get around it. You have to pay them. So why not know what you need to pay and then prepare yourself for it? Right. You know, because if you wind up doing, like I said, you bury your head in the sand mm -hmm. and you let three, four, five years go by, that interest and those penalties wind up compounding over time. That's right. And now it's a much bigger problem. It's a much bigger headache than you really had when it, you know, if you would have addressed it day one. Right. Like years, of, like I know from being in mortgage banking, you know, I'll talk to a client and they'll tell me, oh, you know, I want to buy a house. And I say, okay, I need your tax returns from, you know, these two years. And they'll go, oh, I haven't done my taxes in three years. Right. I'm like, well, you have to file your taxes before. How can I verify how much money you made if you don't file <laughs> exactly. your taxes, you know? And then they want to file and think, and then they get frustrated because, you know, the IRS isn't an overnight system. Correct. <clears throat> yeah. It's not, right? Not even close. It takes Obviously. a long time, you know? So if you file your taxes today, it may be months before you hear back from them or you can get your, you know, verification that you filed. Right. So you're prolonging something that you want to do, which is purchase a home. You know, you're now not in a position to buy that home until you deal with the IRS. Right. And that house that you wanted to buy will no longer be on the market right. at right. that time. So, you know, I wind up talking to <clears throat> someone at IRS probably monthly. Oh, wow. And one of the agents there or in their call centers or whatnot mm -hmm. actually gave me an, exa an excellent example of how the IRS works. You've got a football stadium. Mm -hmm. And you've got 100,000 people that want to buy tickets. But there's only one ticket booth available. So you've got 100,000 people in line. It only takes you two minutes at the booth to give them your money and say, I want one ticket or two tickets or right. whatnot. But you still have to wait in that awful line just to get up to the window to you know handle a two-minute transaction. That makes total sense. And yeah, when she said I said, well, I'm going to use that. And now it's, 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 <laughs> now it's famous, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's on YouTube. Yeah, but, but it makes a lot of sense when you can think about it that way. Right. That you know, all these different people have whatever their own personal tax issues are. Mm -hmm. But you just got to get in line and wait it out. And like you said, sometimes it's going to hold up people's opportunities to buy homes or you know any countless different things that I could hold them up with. Right now, from an education perspective, uh -oh. you know, <laughs> uh -oh, right? You know, like for a business person, you know, they're opening their own business. You know, do do you think they should sit down with an accountant right at the beginning so that they understand how to prepare themselves for that upcoming tax year? Absolutely, and not only for the upcoming tax mm -hmm. year, but just in general. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I'll tell you another example that I give people all the time when they ask me that. And, and honestly, one of the biggest mistakes that up and coming entrepreneurs make mm -hmm. is to wait until their business reaches a certain size threshold. Now they think that they can afford an accountant, right? you know, which is the bad idea. Okay. And when people ask me that very question, I tell them, well, listen, I want you to, I want you to babysit my Rottweiler for the week while I'm gone. Well, do you want to meet my four-month-old Rottweiler or my four-year-old Rottweiler? <laughs> right. You That's see, true. When you've got that four-month-old Rottweiler, he's harmless. Right. You know, you don't mind spending probably days with this guy because right. he's just a fuzzy ball of fun. Right. Well, my four-year-old Rottweiler <laughs> could be potentially lethal. That's very true. You see? So it's always a good idea to start off as early as possible mm -hmm. in giving that accountant an opportunity to understand the ideas that you have, look at what your plan is, and to kind of help you along the way. Right. You know, I tell my clients all the time, you know, I'm not the pilot, you're the pilot. I'm just a navigator. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm the guy that's gonna sit behind you and say, now listen, you know, if you stay at this heading at this altitude, you're gonna run into a mountain in five miles. It's your decision to go left, right, or over. You can do any one of them. Mm -hmm. But you got to do something. Because you don't want to run into it. Because you don't want to run into this mountain. Right. And that's also a decision. That's a decision. You see? Yes, it is. The bad news is that there's only one parachute, and it's mine. You right. See, I can bail out on this guy. <laughs> that's <you see>? true. <laughs> and if you're going to run your plane into this mountain, 
I can step out. I right. can excuse myself. That's true. You see? Uh, so that's why it's always a good idea so that you've got someone or some type of a financial professional who can kind of guide you into, you know, what the best ways to do things strategically for your business, right. especially at its most infant stages. 